What's up, gang? Carolina Jackpot coming at you Saturday morning, about 6 15 ish, December the 14th. And uh, we're a week removed from Championship Saturday. Still haven't been able to find a result from my South Carolina Gamecocks there. I guess they didn't play. Anyway, looking back at the 2019 season and talking about uh, some changes for 2020, is what I want to do today. 2019 season <clears throat> started off with a lot of promise for us. I, it really did. I, we had a tough schedule. However, we were told by our Messiah and leader, head coach, William Boom Muschamp, that this was his best team ever at South Carolina. Yeah. Well, maybe it was talent-wise, but it didn't pan out on the football field. We uh, dropped the opener to North Carolina in the Carolina Panthers Stadium at the Belk College Football Kickoff 24-20. And uh, I just had a bad feeling about the season right there. I really did. I mean, all summer long, I mean, I was making prediction videos about worst case scenarios, best case scenarios. My best case was eight and four. My worst case was four and eight. Um, more about that in a minute. But um, I surely, I didn't include a nor a, 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 a lost North Carolina in my four and eight scenario. My four and eight scenario mapped out a little differently uh, than what it would actually become. Uh, didn't feel like any way we could lose that game, and we shouldn't have. We were up 20-9 to nine in uh, the early fourth quarter, I believe it was. Turned the ball over um, and ended up losing. And, you know, we lose our quarterback, Jake Bentley, last play of the game, breaks his foot. Um, it just, in the season from there, I, I knew we were going to be in for a rough time. Uh, despite the fact that we did usher in True freshman Ryan Holinsky way too early <clears throat> the next week. I knew we were going to be in for a rough time. Why? Because uh, Jake provides an intangible that he could not, and that was senior leadership. Uh, despite the fact that he does have a tendency or has had in the past a tendency to throw the ball to a different colored jersey uh, more often than we'd like him to, uh, he can still sling the hell out of the damn football and uh, pick you up some major yards when you need them. So I knew that we were, uh, knew that things were kind of uh, in a bad place there. But we go out next week, we get a 70 to 10 do wop wop feel good win over Charleston Southern, whatever. Moving on from that, the next week we take on Alabama at home and that was a game that I think it went the way that most Gamecock fans thought it would. I don't think anybody in their right mind thought that we would beat Alabama. Um, but I knew that uh, we would probably come out, punch them in the mouth, keep it close for a little bit, and uh, then eventually lose, uh, but po possibly cover the spread, maybe play pretty well. And uh, that's kind of what happened. Uh, we punched them in the mouth early. We had a uh, fake field goal that uh, I believe we ran either ran for a touchdown or ran for a first down uh, that got um, – call back because of some BS holding penalty. Uh, you know, the referees in Alabama are kind of like this, or they always have been in the past. Uh, that was taken away. Kind of killed a little bit of momentum there. Do I think we would have won the game because of it? No. Do I think it would have been within three scores? No. But anyway, we ended up covering the spread. Uh, ended up holding them uh, to uh, one of their lowest rushing outputs in quite some time. Uh, however, on the flip side, uh, Tua Tagovailoa threw for about 500 yards. So that's that's not good. <laughs> Heading into uh, Missouri at one and two, uh, and we lose 34-14. I believe that score was. And it just I was very, very, very disappointed the next day after that game uh, at the way the offense played. Um, at the way, you know, Ryan Holinsky makes one freshman mistake uh, that costs us seven points, and, um, you know, they, they can't squash that. Right at that point in time, we end up uh, losing by 20 points. He throws a pick six for, like, 100 yards. I mean, it just wasn't a good day all the way around. Uh, Kelly Bryant from Clemson uh, looked just average playing for Missouri. I mean, he really didn't have to do anything spectacular. Uh, we did it all for it. So 
there's that. Um, you, we, if you take away the, uh, just anyway. Uh, moving on from that, uh, Gamecocks. I'm trying to remember exactly how this went. They did get a win at home against Kentucky. Finally snapped the string against them, beat them 24-7. Um, they had a backup quarterback in there who looked absolutely horrible um, and could do absolutely nothing offensively. Gamecock should have shut them out. Uh, they allowed a touchdown late. Uh, Kentucky actually did something uh, that we didn't do throughout the year. They got better. We got worse. They got better. Okay, so uh, that, there was that. Uh, Gamecocks go on the road and knock off the number three ranked Georgia Bulldogs, 2017 in overtime. And uh, you know, before the season started, this is one that I talked about. I said of the three big uh, elite teams that we were playing for the year, or so-called elite teams, Clemson, Alabama, and Georgia. This is the one that I felt like we had the best shot of winning just because of the style of offense they run and the fact that we uh, would have the best chance of stopping it. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, Gamecocks played well that day. I mean, I don't care what anybody says. Fluke, it was it was garbage, blah, 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 you know. And now people say, well, Georgia wasn't any good anyway. They were a shit show. LSU ran all over them. But, well, LSU ran all over a lot of people. So I still think Georgia is definitely one of the best 10 teams in the country. It was a good win for us, and um, it was something to be proud of. What not to be proud of, uh, and I'm still, like I said, trying to remember exactly how all these went. Um, the next week, yeah, at home, uh, we take on the Florida Gators and lose 38-27. 37-28. I can't remember. It was something like that. Uh, in a game where uh, there were really, really bad calls by the official. Uh, on both sides, South Carolina got a few uh, bad calls in our favor. However, most of the bad calls went in the flavor of the Florida Gators and uh, very disappointing. I mean, I didn't know that you could actually hold a defensive back running down the field uh, for 40 yards and that that was legal. Apparently it is now in college football, at least it was that day. Uh, South Carolina loses that game, but I'm not going to one that's going to sit here and say, well, we would have won if it had been called straight down the middle. We wouldn't have. I think we would have lost by three to seven points. But um, it would have at least given us a fair shot at it. Uh, just uh, gave the game away in the fourth quarter. Uh, South Carolina controlled that game for much of it. But uh, the fourth quarter was all... Florida Gators, uh, much like last year, much, much of the same story as last year. Uh, last year, they just ran the ball down our throats. This year, uh, a backup quarterback just threw the ball all over the ballpark. Honest. So, there we go. And we're kind of at a crossroads here where, you know, we have a few winnable games coming up and, um, you know, a chance to kind of get back over the 500 mark and kind of right the ship a little bit as we head down the stretch and the Gamecocks uh, I believe maybe had an off week I'm not sure but at any rate the next game was uh, a road game against the Tennessee Volunteers and here is the turning point and where the schedule or the season excuse me officially uh, turned into a huge turd burger 41-21 loss on the road uh, to the Volunteers just a uh, terrible uh, Gamecocks uh, you know strike early go up 7-0 uh, they should have put the pedal down and just mopped the floor with this team they were more talented than them I think they were a better team than them however they don't uh, they play like garbage uh, they uh, allow them to return a punt for a touchdown and that gave Tennessee all the momentum they needed uh, and they pretty much crushed the Gamecocks after that. The uh, Gamecocks still led 21-17 at the half in that game, but to me, it felt like the momentum was squarely uh, on the side of the Tennessee Volunteers. Uh, we would get the ball down close to the goal line. It was South Carolina. We didn't have a problem getting close to the goal line there in the first half, it seemed like, in that game. But it seemed like what that we would score, and every time we scored, they had to go back, they had to review this. They had to. I mean, it was just 
I, I just wanted to scream. And it just killed our momentum that we could have gotten from any kind of touchdown that we scored and then just gave it squarely back to them. Uh, so, yeah, they ride a, a return a punt for a touchdown to a 41-21 victory uh, because, to me, when you're a good team, things like that, you can overcome them and you don't let it affect the outcome of the game. You don't let it sway the momentum back in the other team's favor. I, that was just embarrassing. And that was officially where, you know, I knew that the season was it was done. Um, you lose. Um, they won. Come back. You win at home against Vanderbilt. Another 24-7 game. Uh, didn't play awfully good early, but uh, <coughs> they finished up pretty well. I think they held Vanderbilt under 200 yards. <clears throat> Total offense. Uh, the defense play. The defense played decently uh, in a lot of games this year. Um, but you know, the offense that we had on the field, that product that we were trotting out there, uh, just made them look a lot worse than they really were. I think we finished up 70th or around 70th in total defense. Uh, we should have been inside the top 50 uh, if we had an offense that could move the ball somewhat. They would have. Uh, these guys were on the field 40 minutes a game uh, later on in the season, on average, about 40 minutes a game. But that's, that's too much. Too much for a defense to be there. Joseph Charlton, our punter, he averaged like 48 yards a kick this year. Uh, he was tied for number 11 in the country in number of punts. So that tells you how many times this guy was out there punting. He was punting a lot. He was punting tied for the 11th most in the country. I don't know where Clemson's punter was, but I guarantee you that guy was probably uh, down in the number 100s in punters as far as uh, number of attempts <clears throat> on the or number of opportunities to punt the football. Um, then back at home again the next week against Appalachian State and the Gamecocks lose 20 to 15. That's where I was. Re I'm really, I'm really ready now uh, to warm up the tar and feathers. I I'm waiting. I'm waiting on Monday morning to come. I'm waiting on the announcement to come that he's fired, and I don't get it. I don't get it. Uh, and I can't believe after losing 20 to 15 at home to a Sun Belt Conference team and taking nothing away, Appalachian State's a good team, a good football program. They have no business beating you. They have no business beating you. It's, it's pathetic. And the fan support that was at that game, that was pathetic as well. And, I mean, I can't blame them. I, now, I wasn't there. Okay, okay I'm just going to have to tell you. I wasn't there. I didn't go to any games this year. Uh, tell me what you want. I'm a bad fan. Um, there were maybe 20,000 people in the stands uh, in the fourth quarter of that game, and 15,000 of them looked like they're Appalachian State fans. Uh, when the Gamecocks were trying to drive – and score uh, a winning touchdown, which uh, they just they came up short. Uh, just not enough uh, gas left in the tank, I guess. They could have pulled off a 22-20 win, but <clears throat> it didn't happen. And uh, we lose 2015 at home and uh, Appalachian State. Finished up the season with one loss. <laughs> um, go on the road, Texas A&M, <clears throat> I believe it was, and... Uh, lose 30 to 6 uh just a terrible game I, I slept the entire second half of that game it was just it was boring it was pathetic but i did go back and watch it and their defense they didn't play bad uh, once again another instance where the defense didn't play bad uh, they just gave up points because our offense couldn't move the ball so in the fourth quarter they gave up 17 points to Texas A&M, they made it look like a blowout, which, I mean, really it was because, I mean, well, you couldn't move the ball, you couldn't score, but uh, it is what it is. And then uh, the final game of the season, after a bye week, you come home against Clemson, uh, you have absolutely no game plan, there's absolutely no creative, our, our creativity uh, was putting the third team quarterback, Jay Yurich, out there to uh, hand the ball off Tavian Feaster to run up the middle for two yards. That was our creativity in that game. You lose 38-3. It, it was a weird type game. Uh, they didn't get blown out. Well, they did get blown out, but it wasn't as bad as what it could have been. They, Clemson didn't score up in the 50s. 
<clears throat> like I thought they might. Um, it was, you know, a pretty much, uh, you know, it was 38-3 at the beginning of the fourth quarter, and I think Clemson just finally decided, let's go to the house. Done here. Um, this team is, you know, <laughs> they're dead. This is not fun anymore. And it really was. It was like the energy, they said, just like I uh, taught people went to the games that it felt like the energy was just there was no energy in the stadium whatsoever. It was, uh, it was just bad. I mean, it was like the, it was like you were going to a funeral, you knew it, and uh, it, it was what it was. There was no uh, excitement. It wasn't like last year uh, when the Gamecocks went up there. You know, it was 28 point underdogs. They come out, they punch them in the mouth early. Uh, they stay with them in the first half, and uh, eventually, you know, depth and talent takes over, and Clemson blows them out. But it was uh, nothing like that. It was uh, just an embarrassing performance all the way around and uh, count off an embarrassing year at 4-8. and eight. So changes are made and Will Muschamp relieves uh, Brian McClendon of his offensive coordinator duties. To say he's going to stay on the staff as wide receivers coach, I don't know about that. I mean, I, I don't think I could stick around after I've been demoted like that. I think he ends up leaving the staff altogether. A week later, hires Mike Bobo as the defense or offensive coordinator, uh, former head coach at Colorado State, former longtime offensive coordinator at Georgia for about eight seasons down there, and uh, for about seven seasons before that, uh, quarterbacks coach at uh, Georgia. Uh, fires the strength and conditioning coach, Jeff Dillman. Uh, good move there. Should have done it last year before the season started. Uh, guy should have uh, should have probably never been brought there. He was with you at Florida. I had a ton of injuries down there as well. But you know we don't learn from our mistakes. We just do them, repeat them again. Um, and uh, they let go the quarterback coach Dan Warner. Probably a good move. He was supposed to be the quarterback guru, right? Quarterback whisperer. Oh, last year, Jake Bentley's interceptions actually went up. They went up. Um, and this year, uh, Ryan Holinsky, who uh, in his defense played hurt, uh, I feel like a lot of the year, um, his interception numbers weren't uh, what Bentley's were, uh, but the touchdown numbers weren't either, uh, especially later on in the season. So uh, what's that mean uh, for 2020? Um <laughs> I don't know. I got a mixed bag of emotions about that. Um, I'm really disappointed that the uh, university didn't decide to go in another direction with the head coach of the football program. Um, I just feel like no matter who the offensive coordinator is down there, they're not going to be able to flourish under Will Muschamp. Um, I think he is uh, a goose that lays the shed egg, and that's how it's always going to be. Uh, he's had some brilliant offensive minds around him. Charlie Weiss uh, down at Florida was considered to be one of the best. Uh, he could do nothing under Will Muschamp. Uh, Kurt Roper, a guy that we made a lot of fun of here on Carolina Jackpot a couple years ago, was a bad offensive coordinator. Uh, you know, the guy was actually a good football coach before he got around Will Muschamp. Uh, he just, uh, he just, just not able to do it. And this is one of the things I'm going to have to, to see it to believe it. I'm going to have to see it to believe it that some good offensive numbers can consistently be put together with this man as the head coach, regardless of who the offensive coordinator is. Now, I feel like Mike Bobo may be the type of, may be the type of person that Muschamp can't push around uh, and Buffalo into doing stupid things that he, uh, that he wants there on the field. But people tell me that, uh, most champ doesn't have anything to do with the play calling. He doesn't have anything. But he has something to do with everything that happens with that football team. He has something to do with everything that happens there. So don't give me that. Uh, don't give me that. Um, the schedule next year is brutal. Uh, the non-conference part is no, you don't play an Appalachian State or uh, you don't play another Power Five uh, opponent like North Carolina. Uh, you play Coastal Carolina. A uh, team that's, I mean, they're uh, a group of five, but they're improving. They're getting better. It's going to be a better team than what you faced two seasons ago to open up the season. And um, you play East Carolina, another group of five team that's improving. Uh, their record didn't really show it this year, 
Uh, they ended up four and eight, but they competed. They competed. Uh, Mike Houston is a guy, a head coach that I would have liked to have seen come to South Carolina. Uh, he was a former head coach at the Citadel. Uh, he turned them into a winner, a consistent FCS playoff team there for a few years. Um, he was promoted uh, to head coach, um, or he was he was hired as head coach at James Madison, uh, who is a legitimate FCS power. They played last night in the FCS playoffs and beat um, uh, Northern Iowa 17-0. Um, won a national championship there, I believe competed for another one. I mean, would have been uh, a solid hire, in my opinion. A solid hire, uh, someone new for the program, has actually beaten South Carolina before as head coach uh, at the Citadel. So, uh, you know, but no, we, we choose to uh, stick with what we know. Uh, South Carolina takes on East Carolina, I think, second game of the season next year. Uh, not too sure about that one. I, I'm just not. I'm not ready to call that a win. I'm not ready to call anything a win or a loss right now. I just can't. But uh, the bottom line is I don't think that they have the offensive talent coming in to uh, – really be able to sustain much of anything i mean they do have they do have some coming in let me rephrase that they have some good young talent coming in i mean is it going to be able to make an immediate impact i'm not sure marshawn lloyd the wherever you look he's a four to five star running back out of maryland uh excellent player he's going to be enrolling at south carolina in january i'm excited to have him i'm really glad that he didn't decommit uh knock on wood not gonna say anything yet it's not on campus yet um and spring ball hadn't came around yet either, so still not going to uh, say that he's officially here because, I mean, we've seen players leave before spring practice. We've seen them leave during spring practice, especially down at Florida. I'm not knocking Florida, but they did have uh, a little of that happen last year. Um, Luke Duddy, Doty. I'm still half asleep. Can't even say the guy's name right. Luke Doty, the uh, – kid from Myrtle Beach, uh, heck of an athlete, uh, quarterback, dual threat type kid, something we haven't had at South Carolina in a number of years. So I'm looking forward to seeing him play. Uh, will he become the starting quarterback uh, over Ryan Holinsky? I don't know. It uh, all kind of uh, depends on what kind of offense they want to run. Um, I think he's probably a little bit better of an athlete. I think uh, Holinsky's probably got a better arm. Um, but I think that Luke Doty's probably a little bit better on his feet. We'll see what happens with that. Um, hopefully somebody doesn't get pissed off and transfer. Uh, the schedule, though, the conference schedule is what it is. I mean, all the games you're playing this year, you play them next year as well. You just flip-flop sites. Um, the the West rotational game uh, was Alabama at home this year. We traded out for a road trip to LSU next year. So, yeah. Not really looking forward to that either. Uh, you got Texas A&M at home this time around. Uh, are you going to make it seven losses in a row? Probably so. I uh, don't see any reason to think not. And I'm looking at next year. I'm thinking another four and eight season, another five and seven. If that happens, he will be fired uh, either uh, right at the conclusion of the season or perhaps during the season, uh, maybe. Uh, which I don't think is good at all uh, for morale. Uh, sometimes it can give teams a little bit of a shot in the arm when somebody gets fired in the middle of the season. But uh, more often than not, I think it's uh, not a good thing. But I could definitely see that happening next year. I really could. Um, you know, perhaps after, uh, you know, a home loss to uh, Tennessee or a home loss to Missouri, somebody like that, and then they finally just say, hey, we're done. We're done here. And uh, Mike Bobo is the interim coach for a season, and then he's gone to – I don't know. I, that's just what I see padding out. Uh, I don't see this ending well. I really don't. I, 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 I like to be optimistic. I always have liked to be optimistic, and maybe over the summer I'll become optimistic again. But as of right now, I'm just not going to be. I'm going to uh, – be very pessimistic and in a pessimistic place because uh, I have no reason uh, for optimism as of yet. Uh, bowl games coming up. Uh, Carolina Jackpot will be previewing all the bowl games. I uh, got you know several weeks worth of them, and uh, you know, I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do it. You know, we kind of freestyle it, kind of willy nilly here on this channel. 
Uh, so I don't know if I'm going to do, you know, a whole week's worth at once, or maybe I'll do three or four here, three or four there. I don't know. But we'll, we'll do a pick against the spread on those bowl games because I'm involved in a challenge for uh, a little bit of cashola. Uh, and uh, maybe I'll reveal some of my picks on here. Um, speaking on that, uh, make sure that you also check out the Rob and Comrade Show on Facebook. Check it out. The Rob and Comrade Show on Facebook, Facebook Live, every uh, Sunday night and Wednesday night at 9.30, live stream for the Rob and Comrade uh, Show podcast, uh, which can be found on uh, Apple, iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. They're now featuring Caroline Jackpot as uh, a regular on the show, and uh, I'm very proud to be part of that group. Uh, we've had some fun so far, and we look forward to uh, having some more fun in the future, talking Clemson, Carolina, football, basketball, baseball, talking uh, NFL stuff, talking uh, pretty much whatever uh, sports topic uh, that we uh, kind of uh, navigate our way over to. So check that out. Uh, if you would, uh, give us a like on Facebook, and I would appreciate it. I'll see you guys later. Appreciate it. Peace, and I'm out. Go Gamecocks.